Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS Test Preparation videos. You will now see Kiara, a candidate from India, score a fantastic band 9 for her performance on the speaking interview. She is doing the IELTS to continue her master's studies in business administration abroad. Like Kiara, over a hundred thousand students have used Applyboard, a world-class platform that helps students connect with universities around the world. We are working together with Applyboard to help you find the right school, right program, right scholarship, and get your visa to study abroad. Through their easy to use platform, you can search for schools and programs and apply in just minutes. With Applyboard, you'll get access to exclusive scholarships that are not available anywhere else. From helping you choose the right course, to getting admission, to going through the visa process, finding your school, settling down, Applied Board and their team of professionals is there with you every step of the way on your educational journey. Apply to study in Canada, US, or the UK. Apply Board has the right connections to help you get there. There are access to over 1,200 educational institutions with over 50,000 programs through Apply Board. World leaders in helping students reach success in their educational goals. As well, you can now use our exclusive code, Academic English Help, also found with the link in the video description to get 15% off your application fee. Try Apply Board today and I'm sure you'll be satisfied. Now let's watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this mm -hmm. part of the test and I will record this for marking purposes. Uh, what is your full name? Uh, my name is uh, Kiara Anand, but please call me Kiara. Okay, Kiara. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. First, may I see your identification? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is a passport I used for registering for the exam. Please have a look. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Here's your passport back. Thank you. For part one, I will ask you a few questions to get mm -hmm. to know you better. Some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? Uh, currently, I'm both working as a travel agent and also um, preparing for my IELTS exam to finish my master's in business administration. What do you do in your free time? Uh, when I get a little bit of my downtime, I may... I like to uh, meditate and I also like to paint. I like painting um, landscapes and flowers with watercolors. Let's talk about weddings and birthdays. How often do you go to a wedding or a birthday party? Well I should say I go to weddings uh, once or twice a year but and um, birthday parties a little bit more often say five or six times a year. Which do you like more? Birthday parties or weddings? Actually, I like both, but if I have to sh say one, then um, I like weddings because that has more music and dance, and the Indian wedding is always a party on its own. Who is invited to a wedding party? Uh, mostly friends, family, relatives, colleagues, everyone are invited. Um, there's a huge number of guests at Indian weddings. Uh, my cousin, she had around 300 plus guests for her wedding. How about a birthday party? Well, for a birthday party, the, the number of uh, people are less, uh, say around 15 to 20 people. Have your birthday parties changed compared to before? Oh, well, no, they haven't. Um, they've remained the same. You, wait, um, you uh, go to a shrine in the morning and then you distribute chocolates or sweets with friends and family and the sweet sweet distribute is a famous desert called the Dudpa. If you could have a wedding party somewhere, where would it be? Well, given a chance to have a wedding party anywhere, then it would be um, on the beach in Goa. 
um, because of the good weather and the atmosphere and the fresh air, it adds up to the mood. And I would like to um, have my wedding um, in summer in Goa. Okay, that is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. Uh, I will pass you a card with some questions, note paper and a pencil. Don't turn the card over yet. Sure. Okay. Uh, you will have one minute to read the questions. Mm -hmm. Think about your answers. Take notes if you wish in that one minute. Then you'll have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Okay. okay. Your one minute begins now. You go ahead, turn over the card. Kiara, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Yes, um, the future idea, the innova uh, one of the innovations that I've always admired and I've seen in a lot of science fiction movie, which is not feasible yet, but will be uh, of a great help to the humankind is a universal translator. Uh, this is a small device that can um, translate any language to any other language in real time with accurate interpretations and expressions. Um, I know that Google Translate is the beginning basic version of this, but what I'm talking about is um, something that uh, not only translates the information, but can also help with the diction and the slang without even going through the actual um, language, without even uh, knowing the original language. And um, I've seen these kind of devices in a lot of movies, and they're very, like, they're incredibly helpful for uh, people who travel around the world, people who do business globally, um, to and makes it easy for them to connect with people. And this kind of a device, I think, would um, improve or make people feel more confident and comfortable among strangers in in different situations and um, for this to work I think um, uh, since language is very complicated on an individual basis um, this device would need a um, very powerful AI uh, with um, one person having the transmitter and the speaker and the other with a earpiece microphone. All right I'm gonna stop you there Two minutes is up. I'll take back the note paper, the uh, pencil, and um, yeah, and the questions. Thanks. And now we'll continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Um, let's talk about uh, future technology. Will humanity continue to advance as quickly with technology in the future as it has for the past 30 years? Uh, well, I think that the uh, human will keep moving forward as fast, if not faster, with the growing technology uh, because the population has been, has never been this educated ever before. So it's, I think it'll go um, growing. Can you elaborate? Yeah, um, because uh, the mathematician, the physicist, the um, doctors, they're able to communicate uh, with each other with the technology and it becomes easier for them to um, make new science possible. What breakthroughs in technology may people see that will change the fundamental function of society like the internet these days? Yeah, um, well I see that there will be a great uh, a lot of uh, advancement in um, transportation, energy, and communication. And when when I'm talking about this, I remember I can um, think of nuclear fission reactor, which will um, give um, endless, limitless energy. Will this be positive or negative? Well, um, this will be a great help for the human because uh, of the energy crisis, but um, it should also be in mind that uh, it's also important to have in mind that this is um, driven for the improvement and it's not, um, and human beings are not driven to um, greed and destruction. How will have globalization influenced technological advancements in the future? Uh, I see a lot of um, developmental um, 
a technological uh, advancement in the future, like I said in the previous question. Um, so since the communication is made possible, um, it can be for the best. But also to bear in mind that the road to hell was paved with good intentions. So what must societies be careful about as this develops? Yeah, uh, they have to be careful about um, following the ethical principles to form a proper guideline and go through it because um, the scientists might develop the nuclear fission that I said in good intention but might end up uh, creating a devastating explosion. Let's talk about future society. How will societies change over the next 10 years? Well, um, next 10 years, uh, I can see that there will be a great um, change in the society, especially with the pandemic situation that we at. Um, I think people will be more careful uh, and the way of interaction will improve and will stay longer. The effect of it will stay longer. And I feel that people will be more um, uh, able to accept what they have and the people who they're with. At least that's what I hope. How about the next 50 years? Well, the next 50 years, that's like half a century or um, two generations later. It's hard to imagine. I mean, hard to um, say, but uh, to what I can imagine, it is uh, more like people will be more connected to the technology and live in a virtual world than in the reality. Some people feel that it is time for unified international taxes, laws, and regulations to be implemented for the better function of a global community. Is this a good idea or not, and why? Well, I think it's a great idea, but I don't see it's people are ready for uh, this change because they're more uh, self-oriented and um, greedy. But uh, I think the globalization will make this change happen on its own. Um, already people are complaining of not enough funding for the World Health Organizations and uh, for the medical and other um, necessities. And also this will help uh, people with uh, to pay taxes and people who uh, average earners who pay taxes because it will prevent people who hide their um, taxes and tax shelters and Okay, that's the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in about two weeks' time, Kara, with the other sections. Mm -hmm. uh, have a great rest of your day. Remember to take your passport yeah, with you. Sure. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Clearly, Kiara has spent several years to practice and use the English language, and she is near a native level. Nevertheless, there are two places where she could perform better. Now, a band 9 is not necessarily a perfect score. It's an expert user of the English language, which Kira clearly is. However, in some of her responses, she lacks confidence. Also, you will notice a few responses where she uses the pronoun you. It's not good to do either of these. In the exam, you want to show confidence. This can be achieved through practice. Be certain of the information that you give and use strong intonation to give the sensation of confidence. Also, do not use the word you. Although we do this in natural everyday language, in professional communication, it's good to avoid the pronoun you and instead use other subjective nouns like people, individuals, athletes, photographers, whatever fits better in the context. Follow these tips, practice every day, and you'll be just as good as Kiara, if not better. Good luck the next time you sit your IELTS exam. While you're studying for your IELTS exam, again, make sure to check out Apply Board and let their professionals help you to choose the right country, university, and program for your academic success.
Take a step in the right direction. Sign up for Apply Board today. For lots more help with your IELTS exam, visit and join our premium package at aehelp.com. Get over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course, and six original practice exams. You can use this code to get a 10% discount, also in the video description. Start your IELTS success today. Subscribe to our channel, click over here, watch another video, click right up here, and click our IELTS hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.